Okay, so we've been making these videos for a while now, but for some reason the guys in our writing department keep forgetting one thing. Stop writing when you're drunk. We'll season it, eh? They keep choosing these small dogs that have no sense of masculinity at all. When are we going to get to the Great Danes, the Pit Bulls, or any of the other dogs with huge testicles? Well, it won't be today. Today, we're stuck with hearing about another midget dog, the Maltese. Right now we can't afford a sober writer, so be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Please help us get monetized so we won't be forced to endure the ramblings of a middle-aged man who drinks Cosmos like a little bitch. What What's up, up homie, huh? Oh. <laughs> Until then, here are 10 drunken facts about the Maltese dog. <laughs> Number 10. Its name reflects where it came from. You know what's really stupid? There are some dog breeds out there who have names that don't properly reflect where they actually came from. Yes, we're talking to you, French Bulldogs, you fake pieces of crap. Run, bitch! Run! But that isn't the case with the Maltese. This dog is from the Caribbean island of Malta, an island so obscure that you didn't even realize that we lied about it being in the Caribbean. It's actually in the Mediterranean Sea where all the cool kids hang out. There's a theory saying that the dogs were bred in Malta, but were quickly taken by the Romans and claimed as theirs, which is a common trait for Romans during that time. What does that mean for us today, though? Simple, we now know that the Roman Maltese dogs killed Jesus. How's that for a history lesson? Number 9. After the Maltese dog killed Jesus, it entered witness protection and went by other names. So maybe it didn't actually kill Jesus. In actuality, he came back to life anyways. That means someone just sucks at killing. But that was about the time that the Roman Empire started sucking a lot more and losing steam. So as other people started coming through, the dogs needed to change their names. Over the course of their existence, and as various owners came in and took them into their societies, the breed went by many different names. Some include the Comforter Dog, perfect if you're a bitch, Maltese Lion Dog, which is bullshit because these things are only like 12 inches long, Maltese Terrier, we couldn't think of anything funny to put here, and the Shock Dog, which seems like a WWE wrestling name. Number 8. The Maltese has been around for a long time. Well, no shit. We've only been talking about this for the entire video so far, right? Remember, the writer is drunk, but there is still more to unpack. The Maltese may have been around during Bible times, but it actually goes back further than that. When we say further, we mean nearly a thousand years. That's some crazy shit right there. It is likely that these dogs were enjoyed by some of the ancient Greeks, or they sat on the laps of the pharaohs who watched the aliens build the pyramids. Okay, we made that one up. The aliens probably built them before the time of the Maltese dogs. Number 7. They were especially loved by the rich and the royal. Just one look at these prim and proper assholes and you can tell that they think they're better than everyone else. I mean, just look at their silky smooth all white fur, which makes them racist. You can't tell me that they don't spend two hours in the bathroom flat ironing that shit, right? But back in the day, their elegant features caught the eyes of the rich people like the Monopoly guy and royalty. If you take a look at some of the horrible paintings from ancient times, you can see the dog's likeness in various pieces of artwork gracing royal courts. Publicus, wait, Plubicus? Publicus, that's it, Publicus. He was the governor of Rome in the first century and owned a Maltese named Issa. Even Queen Elizabeth I and Mary Queen of Scots both had little Maltese pups that they would spoil to no end. Yeah, this may make the dog seem spoiled, but think of what life would be if you had one. You'd instantly be better than all of your friends and family. Number 6. Their racist all-white color was actually on purpose. Here we are again, going back to those asshole Roman people. Apparently, the color white was a very sacred color to those guys. As such, they did everything they could to have white things. This included their pets. The Roman emperors were especially fond of the dogs, and so they would breed them in certain ways to ensure that their fur would always remain white. So, why have these racist dogs been allowed to continue to exist? The color white may have been sacred to the Romans, but here it makes everyone from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to anyone that lives in San Francisco break down into crippling states of depression. We've spent many days doing nothing trying to figure out why they have been allowed to continue with their whiteness, but that time was also spent in various stages of drunkenness. So, in the end, we didn't really think of anything so much as just lay around trying not to vomit. Number 5. They Don't Shed Holy shit, you mean to tell me that the video has been going on for this long without an actual positive note? 
Well, this one is actually a lifesaver. From the website that we're definitely referencing and in no way plagiarizing, it says that these dogs have hair instead of fur. What does that even mean, hair instead of fur? What this means is that it doesn't shed. It stays in place, only needing an occasional haircut to keep it looking all portion shit. You know who this really helps? Those guests who always complain that they're allergic to pet dander and fur and all that. Yeah, Karen, we heard you for the fifth time. But when you have a Maltese, you can call Karen out on all of her bullshit in public. Why don't we just relax and turn on the radio? Would you like M or F? Okay, Karen, we have a Maltese. That means they don't shed and the only thing left to pin your sneezing on is your insatiable cocaine habit. That's why you use the bathroom all the time and look like shit, Karen. <laughs> Number 4. They may not shed, but they still require quite a bit of maintenance. We were so focused on telling Karen to suck a dick and how awesome it is to have a dog that doesn't shed, we forgot that we weren't at the end of the video. There's more unfortunate news. They may not shed, but the Maltese have profuse coats, which means they need to be brushed on a regular basis. This is what keeps their fur that bright shade of racist white that so many people recognize. When we say regular basis, we're talking about daily brushing. This is why so many people decide that having all that hair isn't worth the trouble, so they cut their dog's hair pretty short to avoid having to constantly groom them. It's called the puppy cut, because it leaves them looking like a young puppy all the time. If humans did this to each other, there's a 75% chance you would end up the subject of some sex investigation or something. Number 3. Maltese dogs do not obey the laws of gravity, or they use performance-enhancing drugs. These dogs only measure a few inches off the ground and weigh less than 10 pounds, but they have an incredible ability to jump very high. What do we mean by very high? The phrase very high relates to somewhere around 6 to 7 feet in the air. If you're coming home from work and they're at the door waiting to greet you, then you had better not be holding anything in your hands and arms. These sons of bitches don't care. They'll jump at you and make you catch them. It's the same principle as a trust fall. Only these trust falls end in you getting licked in the face after they've licked their own asses. Number 2. If you need therapy, a Maltese is cheaper than a psychiatrist. For people who have some psychological issues in life, we genuinely give you our love and respect. For the rest of you who can't afford a dog sitter and decide you want to go on Amazon to buy a dog harness that says therapy dog, then take it to Walmart when I'm grocery shopping and let it bark and shit in the aisles. From the bottom of my heart, f*** your eyes. No one has time for your stupidity. Back to the real issue though, Maltese dogs are actually very good therapy dogs. Some of the most common places to see therapy dogs such as the Maltese are in hospitals, nursing homes, disaster areas, and underprivileged schools. Studies have shown that petting an animal can reduce everything from stress to bullying. Other places that we believe therapy dogs should be used are the DMV, any house during Thanksgiving when someone brings up politics, and airports. I know they already have some dogs at airports, but those are attached to policemen who arrest me and poke me with rubber gloves. It looks like it's your lucky day, bastard. Drop them. Number 1. There used to be a Maltese that is richer than you. If you weren't depressed before, you're about to be. There was once a Maltese dog named Take Trouble, who belonged to a real estate developer named Leona Helmsley. Sadly, she died in 2007, but in her will, she left $12 million to her effing dog. What the fuck? The government eventually trimmed it down, though, knowing that it was morally, ethically, spiritually, and logically idiotic. She only kept $2 million out of the original 12. How will the dog live on such a meager budget? How will it spend the money? By the way, this is not a rhetorical question. How the hell will it spend the money? What are some other things you know about the Maltese dog? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out some of our previous videos for more great information. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.